okay so let us start um, on this platform is uh, basically we cannot uh, cannot record this here So can you see the screen? Hello. Yes, sir. So. Okay. Okay. Can you see what I am writing on the screen? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. In previous class, uh, uh, we actually discussed about uh, the carrier concentration in uh, semiconductor, how to write down the carrier concentration in terms of uh, uh, different energy levels. Okay. So uh, we wrote uh, the electronic and hole concentration and not and uh, P naught of uh, uh, EI. The Fermi level and the Fermi level uh, EF. Okay, so N naught was written in terms of Ni as Ni exponential uh, EF minus EI, and uh, for uh, whole concentration, it was uh, P naught equal to Ni exponential EI minus EF. Okay, and then uh, I told you that uh, uh, this expression can also be written in terms of uh, the Fermi potential phi f. Phi f is uh, basically uh, defined as E i minus E f by Q. And this potential is uh, uh, between. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, between the EI and EF level. So EC level, EV level is here, and uh, EI in the middle. And uh, uh, let's say that it is a n-type semiconductor, so Fermi level should be here. And uh, this difference is basically uh, Q time phi of you can say. The potential multiplied by Q it becomes energy so uh, the separation between uh, the fermi level and the intrinsic fermi level is a very important parameter and it tells us uh, uh, about the carrier concentration in the semiconductor device okay so uh, if this is uh, constant throughout i just said that this is uh, along the position and this is uh, basically the increasing energy so if you see that uh, along the position, if this EI minus EF difference is constant, it means that uh, the carrier electronic concentration is constant uh, throughout the device. Okay. So uh, of course, this is for a n-type case. For p-type case, the Fermi level would be uh, lower than uh, EI. It could be somewhere here. And in that case, uh, this difference uh, Q time uh, would be the EI minus EF, and this could be used to calculate the electronics and pole concentration. Okay, so please keep in 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 your mind that phi of is uh, basically representing Q time phi of is representing the gap between EI minus uh, uh, gap between EI and EF. Okay, and phi of also is doping dependent uh, term. You have seen this in the previous class. Uh, we wrote this phi of uh, in terms of uh, uh, the doping density Na. Okay, so phi of was uh, uh, basically uh, could be written as uh, phi t uh, natural log of for p type semiconductor and for n type turns out to be minus phi t natural log of minus nd upon ni. Okay. So 
so uh, doping level if the doping level uh, impurity level in the semiconductor is given uh, for n type or p type semiconductor we can compute this for me energy potential higher okay so uh, based on uh, the definition of five here uh, the above uh, two equations could be modified as n not equal to ni uh, exponential of course since it is defined as ei minus ef by q so this turns out to be minus five f by phi t and uh, in case uh, for the second case for the whole concentration uh, it turns out to be ni exponential uh, phi f by so as uh, i said here that uh, we are considering is a sample uh, semiconductor sample which is uh, in thermal equilibrium and also we can consider uh, we consider that the sample is uniformly doped okay and uh, there is no local electric field and of course you will see that uh, at microscopic level the electric field will always be there in the semiconductor okay uh, at atomic level but we are not considering that we are considering uh, in a larger con uh, context so in a larger context in absence of electric field uh, you will see that the charges uh, will be distributed uniformly in the semiconductor material and therefore uh, at uh, each and every point uh, we can consider that the charge density is same and that's why when we draw this uh, energy band diagram e versus x we can consider that uh, uh, ef minus ai or phi f uh, remains constant throughout along this uh, along this position okay so uh, this is actually our discussion so far regarding uh, uh, the semiconductor uh, equilibrium okay of electric field but let us say that uh, there is a uh, electric field at macroscopic level but there is still uh, the sample is in thermal equilibrium okay it this could be a possibility that uh, a semiconductor uh, even in presence of microscopic uh, presence of uh, microscopic uh, electric field uh, a semiconductor can be in uh, can be in uh, uh, thermal equilibrium okay the one of the example biggest example are very popular example capacitor so in mos capacitor you know that uh, in the mos capacitor structures that we have already discussed that uh, uh, a semiconductor uh, is there the, on the top of semiconductor and oxide layer a, a gate layer here uh, gate material and the gate terminal or uh, body terminal so uh, non zero work function difference because metal uh, this metal layer may be a polysilicon or i mean this gate layer may be a polysilicon or metal layer so if let's say that uh, even if it is a polysilicon layer with a different doping than the rest of the substrate uh, there will be work function difference between these two and because of that an electric field can be set up uh, uh, will be established in this uh, uh, semiconductor at microscopic level okay so uh, the that electric field basically uh, is may be present but Uh, as you see that there is a oxide in between here between uh, the metal layer and the semiconductor there is a oxide so carriers cannot move in vertically uh, either up in upward direction or downward direction because of this insulator and uh, as a result you see there will be no uh, uh, net flow of the charge there will not be any current but still the electric field can exist so if there is not flow of uh, the current we can consider Uh, uh the semiconductor below this oxide is in uh, thermal equilibrium but in field so uh, what i wanted to tell you that uh, even in presence of uh, microscopic electric field equilibrium uh, can be there in the semiconductor so now i uh, will discuss uh, if uh, there is a uh, electric field and uh, thermal equilibrium uh, is also there then how to compute the uh, how to compute uh, uh, and whole charge density in the semiconductor material okay so uh, 
if, if in any semiconductor material, let's say that uh, even if it is in thermal equilibrium, but there is electric field. There is an electric field, then because of this electric field, uh, you will see that uh, uh, the charges uh, may not be uh, same at each and every point. Okay, at, let's say that the charge density is uh, different here and the charge density is different here. So, if it is so, if charge density is different here, then as you uh, know that uh, uh, if you recall the previous expression, Ni, the electronic concentration, the N naught the electronic concentration was equal to Ni e to the power uh, Ti by Kt, okay? So, in presence of electric field, you can see that the charge density uh, concentration uh, may vary locally, okay? Maybe at this point concentration is N1, at this point concentration is N2, okay? So, uh, if it is so, then you will see that this EI minus EF uh, cannot be constant because this EI minus EF is a measure of this electronic concentration N. Okay, so this N naught may be N1 or N2 depending upon at which position we are actually uh, estimating this electronic density. So if you are estimating ele electronic density at this point, uh, then basically uh, this is N1 at N2, this is N naught becomes N2. So it clearly means that this uh, uh, cannot be same at this position N1 and N2. And we are also considering that there is a thermal equilibrium, no flow of the uh, net flow of the uh, 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 carriers at the topic level. So the Fermi level has uh, to be remain constant. Okay, if there is a uh, flow of uh, 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 charge carriers, then a uh, Fermi level cannot be uh, constant. Okay, if uh, uh, the Fermi level, the gradient of the Fermi level, let's say del F by del X along the position, if it is uh, 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 zero, means the material is in thermal, I mean, uh, if EF uh, with position, Okay, then uh, 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 we, we, we say that the sample is in thermal equilibrium. So, since EF minus EI is changing, but EF is not changing, so EI has to change, okay, to, uh, to uh, show the different uh, carrier concentration at the two different points. Am I right? Because EF cannot change, if EF will change means there is a net flow of the carriers at the microscopic level, which we are actually not considering here no net flow of the carrier so uh, ef as ef remain constant so ei will vary uh, from uh, point to point at this position uh, ei is maybe ei1 and at this point it may be okay so you see that uh, because of uh, presence of electric field the uh, the, the source of uh, the uneven in this uh, sample uh, is the presence of electric field. So because of uh, the presence of electric field, now you will see that uh, if you are considering that EF is a constant throughout the semiconductor material, so EI uh, cannot remain constant. EI will have uh, certain, I mean, it will bend. It will bend upward or downward depending upon what is the direction of the electric field in the sample. But definitely uh, this gap EI, if it is our EF, uh, we are talking about let's say p-type semiconductor material. So EI uh, will actually bend little bit. It bends upward when we are going towards the positive x direction. Okay, here uh, this gap is larger. Okay, here this is a smaller gap. So in presence of electric field, will bend. EI uh, is followed by EC and EB. EC will follow EI. So there will be a uh, bending in uh, uh, valence energy level and also there will be bending in the conduction energy level uh, proportionally. Okay. EC, uh, the bending in EI will be followed by the bending in EC and EB because again, if I take uh, uh, delta EC, uh, okay. So uh, EC and EB uh, will follow uh, this EI 
and uh, as a result you see that there is a band binding okay so uh, when ever there is a electric field present in uh, the semiconductor material uh, you see that the bands will bend okay if the carriers are also moving uh, net flow of the carrier and there is a current then ef has to also bend uh, ef cannot be at the same level throughout the semiconductor material otherwise uh, ec and ev has to bend okay so if there is a band uh, means uh, uh, band bending that is presence of electric field and if there is electric field of course uh, there is a uh, potential difference in uh, the semiconductor material okay so here uh, one case is shown that uh, uh, here the energy band diagram is shown and uh, uh, in presence of electric field and because of uh, the electric field you see that the bands are bent here ec level ev layer are bent and ei always comes in the uh, middle of this uh, forbidden gap so this difference uh, has to be always equal to uh, this difference okay ef is constant because we are considering that uh, no current is flowing okay thermal equilibrium and uh, this uh, uh, the banding in this band can be used to measure uh, the electric field and potential okay so uh, if you just uh, if you like to draw the potential the potential is nothing but uh, you can invert this banding in ec and you can get the shape of uh, the potential variation how the potential is varying so if this is a particular case of uh, energy band bending then basically the potential will be varying like this okay from uh, it goes from a higher value to the lower value in the positive x direction because of this formula okay uh, this uh, becomes even more clear when uh, you uh, look at uh, this small derivation okay uh, as i said that uh, the potential energy potential energy is uh, equal to uh, your uh, ec minus ef for electronic charge is equal to ec minus ef and the potential energy can be equated to minus q times v so the potential here is minus 1 upon q times ec minus ef so you can see here that if we can invert this ec curve uh, basically uh, the shape of uh, the potential curve will be uh, uh, can be obtained okay so that's what i said that you just invert the energy band diagram and you will get the shape of the potential curve and once the potential expression is known from the electric field e equal to minus del v by del x electric field is the negative gradient of uh, uh, the potential so here you see that uh, it can be uh, substituted here and we can write here 1 by q del ec by del x or 1 by q it could be del ev by del x since ec and ev uh, will vary similarly so uh, we write here del ec by del x or del ev by del x actually uh, both will gives us information about the electric field so to plot the electric field we can uh, follow the variation in conduction energy level or valence energy level or uh, intrinsic fermi level so from both uh, from all three uh, variations we can uh, predict uh, how uh, the potential is uh, uh, what is the how the potential is changing uh, in the semiconductor when we uh, are moving from one point to uh, the another point in the semiconductor okay and of course uh, the carrier concentration uh, 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 may vary locally uh, from one point to another point so if uh, we consider a case here that uh, uh, the uh, in a semiconductor material if the carrier concentration is uh, at particular point 1 is M n1 0.2 is n2 then uh, from uh, if the carrier concentrations are known then we can find out this change in the potential when we move from point 1 to 2 when we move from point 1 to 2 let's say that there is a change in the potential psi 1 to so psi 1 to can be directly uh, determined by the n1 and n2 the uh, respective concentration of the electronic uh, 
respective electronic charge density at the two uh, positions one and two so it's a very simple derivation you can see n1 uh, is equal to ni e to the power ef minus ein by kt uh, so ef uh, is basically constant uh, with the same region that we discussed uh, some time ago and n2 is basically ni exponential ef by kt because the intrinsic fermi level will be different from the two position uh, just to just to uh, uh, show uh, that uh, the electronic concentration is different at the two positions okay now if i take uh, n1 by n2 so you can see here exponential ei2 minus ei1 by kt ef cancelled out and ei2 minus ei1 by q by kt by q so finally uh, we can write it uh, as uh, uh, n1 by n2 uh, equal to n1 by n2 uh, equal to exponential phi psi 1 2 upon phi t so change in the potential when we move from point 1 to 2 that you have to keep in your mind when we move from this position to this position okay and similarly if the whole concentrations are also known at the two positions then we can find out the change in the potential uh, when we move from point two to one so uh, this is uh, uh, psi one two and this is basically psi two one so p2 is exponential psi two one upon phi t whereas n1 upon n2 is exponential psi 1 2 upon phi t so this one is straight forward 1 by 2 is here basically 1 2 so this doping divided by this doping is basically equal to exponential the change in the potential psi 1 2 uh, when you move from the point 1 to that actually is a very important relation and you have to keep in your mind because in uh, uh, in coming lectures in future uh, we will be actually uh, using this expression uh, uh, more oftenly okay so uh, please keep this in your mind that if the semiconductor is in equilibrium with uh, even in the presence of electric field and the charge concentrations are known at the two particular positions to given position then we can relate the potential difference between the two positions in terms of the charge concentration at two uh, different points okay is it making sense any question any doubt anybody am i audible to all yes. So if you have any question, uh, you can ask, okay? Then I will uh, proceed. So is it by everyone? Sir, psi 1, 2, uh, psi 2, 1 is uh, charge concentration difference. 2 and psi 2, 1. Is a potential difference, okay? Psi so one two is a potential difference. Uh, 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 when I move from a uh, point one to two, okay, point one to two, so there will be potential difference. Psi one two is a potential difference, not charge difference, okay? The difference when I move from point one to two change in the potential you can say change in the potential when i move from point one to two sir uh, can we write sir, can we write psi one two equals to minus of psi two one uh, psi two one uh, of course that's true okay that is okay, no problem. Another question. Keep uh, this equation in your mind because in most of our analysis, we'll be using directly this relation, okay? It's simple but very, very uh, effective equation of relating the potential uh, between two points in terms of their uh, uh, charge densities, okay? 
far uh, basically uh, uh, we have been uh, we have been considering so far regarding uh, for a uh, uh, semiconductor and thermal equilibrium but uh, there may be cases where the thermal equilibrium is broken okay and uh, um, there could be uh, a number of reasons why uh, how the thermal equilibrium can be broken for example let's say that if you have a piece of semiconductor and you, you create a potential difference across it once the setup externally not the uh, i'm not talking about the electric field at microscopic level when the external electric field is set up with the help of a battery uh, then uh, basically uh, you see that the carriers will be injected uh, uh, at uh, this end of the one end of uh, the semiconductor material and they will either diffuse or drip uh, they will uh, also drip through uh, uh, the semiconductor okay and if there is a concentration gradient uh, as well in the semiconductor they will also diffuse okay so what will happen this equilibrium uh, electron and hole concentration uh, 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 the equilibrium is broken and you can see that same fermi level cannot be used to predict the <coughs> concentration and you see that uh, in a p type uh, material or n type material you saw that both uh, uh, for both cases the carrier concentration were uh, written of fermi uh, potential okay so here i am uh, writing those equation once again this will make more sense so whether i am calculating the electronic concentration n not equal to ni exponential uh, minus phi uh, f by phi t and uh, p not equal to basically ni exponential t okay so uh, the same fermi potential because phi f is uh, nothing but ei minus ef so i am using the uh, for computing both uh, the electronic concentration and hole concentration uh, in a semiconductor let's say that the semiconductor is n type okay so if you are dealing with n type uh, material so for n type you know that uh, uh, this uh, phi f uh, becomes negative and becomes positive so n not will be greater than ni p not will be less than ni because now phi f is negative so this exponential negative term will be very very small and uh, p naught goes less than ni so sim single uh, phi f is used to compute both n naught used to compute both n naught and p naught both electronic concentration and hole concentration both electronic concentration and hole concentration in n type semiconductor material are uh, the both carriers in a p type semiconductor material can be computed by these two formula using single same fermi level phi f but when equilibrium is broken one of the carrier uh, concentration will increase uh, disproportionately compared to the other for example uh, if let's say using a battery here so battery is let's say supplying one kind of uh, carrier to uh, uh, the semiconductor so electronic concentration has been uh, now uh, become much much uh, greater i mean uh, it has uh, increased uh, disproportionately uh, compared to uh, the concentration whole concentration decrement so in that case uh, what will happen that both uh, electron and whole concentration will be computed by the different fermi level computed by the same fermi level and uh, those uh, different fermi levels are known as uh, quasi fermi levels okay and uh, uh, the two has to be used to compute the electronic and hole concentration under non equilibrium okay the reason is very simple the reason is because of some external source maybe it's a battery or maybe it's some sort of illumination uh, concentrations will change uh, disproportionately and therefore uh, the same uh, phi f here and ef cannot be used to compute uh, the phi f for both uh, electrons and holes okay so what we see so instead we will have uh, two different relation 
uh, and those relation uh, can now be uh, seen here that uh, the two relations uh, these are identical to uh, that of uh, what we have discussed but with only a minor difference the minor difference is now the fermi potential ef is replaced by efp quasi fermi potential so whole quasi fermi energy okay whole okay and this is efn for computing electronic concentration and this is called the electron quasi fermi energy level okay so efp and efn are used instead of ef and uh, the region is pretty simple as i discussed and also in this case uh, the mass action law that, uh, that n naught into p naught is equal to n i square will not hold true okay region is very carrier concentration will increase disproportionately compared to uh, the other uh, decreases that's why this relation does not hold uh, hold true uh, for a semiconductor under uh, the non equilibrium case and which is uh, subject to some sort of energy excitation some sort of uh, radiation some sort of illumination or some sort of uh, um, uh, electric field uh, externally applied electric field so uh, these are the, the different uh, uh, i mean uh, we discuss how uh, the carrier concentrations uh, can be uh, in uh, semiconductor under equilibrium or if the semiconductor is not equilibrium under electric field and in third case if the semiconductor is not equilibrium at all then uh, the uh, fermi levels are replaced by their uh, quasi fermi potentials efp and efn to compute the electronic and pole concentration is it okay to all so i would like to introduce you some basic uh, equations so these equations will be used uh, throughout uh, our analysis so uh, uh, it will be good if we uh, very quickly uh, uh, review uh, these uh, basic equations so um, uh, first of all uh, if for a given uh, specimen of the semiconductor have to write um, uh, the, uh, we, uh, we can uh, we have to understand what kind of charge okay and uh, how, what will be the total charge what will be the net charge in the semiconductor so in any uh, given uh, semiconductor materials there could be four uh, different kind of charges present okay this could be an electron be a hole or it could be an uh, acceptor ion or it could be a, a donor ion sorry it it is a uh, donor ion and acceptor ion okay any uh, semiconductor materials although the material is uh, charge neutral uh, as a whole okay uh, 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 if you inspect locally microscopically microscopic level then uh, we can observe the negative electrons which are negatively charged hole that are positively charged so find the, the donor atoms impurity atoms which could be positively charged and the acceptor atoms which could be negatively charged so if the whole charge density is uh, qp i am uh, please keep in mind that i am uh, uh, taking a most general case okay uh, from case to case basis uh, uh one two or three terms uh, of uh, these charges uh, uh, can be uh, removed and uh, we'll be able to get the net charges okay so here if uh, let's say the whole charge density is uh, then uh, the total whole charge density is going to uh, i mean uh, charge density is going to be qp p is the um, uh, number of positive charges per unit volume number of holes per unit uh, volume and the electronic charge if n is the number of uh, uh, electrons per unit volume so the total electronic charge is going to be minus qn 
because of the ionized uh, uh, donor atoms, the charge is going to be plus Q and D. And for ionized acceptor ions, the charge is going to be okay. So the two hole and the donor ion charges and the two charges are negative that are electron minus Q and and the acceptor ions minus Q. And. So if you have to write down the total charge expression rho, this is equal to uh, uh, Q time uh, P minus N, the whole density, minus electron density, donor density, minus acceptor density. So this is the, this, uh, this total charge in the semiconductor material. If it's a P type material, uh, 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 it's a, if it's a, a p type material so in p type material uh, only donor ions will be present and the uh, sorry uh, only acceptor ions will be present so nd will be zero only na will be present so the total charge density will be q type semiconductor material the uh, total uh, charge density is going to be p whole there will be electron in a p type semiconductor material Donor ions uh, will be negligible or it can be uh, considered to be zero and there will be acceptor ions here minus Na. Okay. N type semiconductor material, so the electronic charge density uh, could be uh, Q time uh, P minus N uh, plus ND. If let's say that uh, your semiconductor material is fully depleted, there is no carrier and it is P type. P type semiconductor material, let's say that the some portion of, let's say that this is a P type semiconductor material, and this some portion of this P type material is fully depleted from the mobile carriers. So if the if we have to write the, the charge in this region to be uh, Q time. Uh, minus n only because the hole and the electronic density can be neglected because we are considering that this region is depleted from the carrier. So rho is equal to simply q time minus q time n a. In fashion, if there is a uh, n type uh, semiconductor material and the n type semiconductor material, uh, if the some portion of this material is depleted then uh, the total charge density will be how much and will be zero and the total whole charge density will be equal to q time and d in this particular region okay so depending upon the specific case given case uh, either uh, p could be zero n could be zero nd could be zero and I could, so uh, considering the case are uh, by in some cases we take some approximation so after taking those approximation we could write uh, uh, the total charge in the semiconductor and if you are considering that uh, at microscopic level if uh, 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 the material is charge neutral so at microscopic level uh, we can say that or even you can see that uh, if, if it is a p-type material, in some uh, particular section, it could be a charge neutral. Okay, this is a, this could be a possibility. Even if it is an n-type material, in some particular region, it could be a charge neutral. So, if in this region, if it is a charge neutral, the total charge can be computed to zero. And if it is so, then I I I I could write p minus n is equal to uh, n a minus n d. Absolutely no problem. Minus n is uh, the total charge from the carriers, mobile carriers. N a minus n d is the total charge uh, from the impurity, and these two has to balance each other. So p minus n is net positive charge. Positive charge will be balanced by this net negative charge here, and <coughs> <coughs> the semiconductor will be neutral in that particular region. Any question?
anybody any question please let me know no question uh, uh, let me uh, go ahead then uh, do you have a class at 12 anybody has a class 12 any other lecture scheduled गौतम डू यू हैव अ क्लास सो लेट मी कंटिन्यू फॉर टेन मोर मिनट्स एंड देन आई विल बी एबल टू फिनिश व्हाट वाज प्लान फॉर टुडे ओके and you see that uh, since uh, there are charges in the semiconductor material uh, then uh, the uh, rules of electrostatic will also be applicable in the charges okay so gauss law will be applicable so uh, let us say that there is a specimen of the semiconductor material here this is a specimen okay and uh, uh, the charge density is rho i rho i means uh, just look here This is y axis and x axis. Okay, so the charge density is varying in uh, only one direction, in y direction, in this direction only. And uh, this is a uh, uh, arbitrarily taken position y naught, and uh, another position here is y. Okay, y y is uh, the uh, carrier uh, charge density in the semiconductor material. So Gauss law is applicable. So this is uh, Gauss law equation, as you know. so the gradient of electric field de by dy is equal to rho y upon epsilon s okay rho y is the charge density s is the uh, permittivity uh, of uh, uh, semiconductor material epsilon s is permittivity which is equal to ks time epsilon not so ks is uh, relative permittivity multiplied by epsilon s the permittivity of the free space so this uh, free space permittivity can be considered to be 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 14 farad per centimeter and the relative permittivity for silicon be 11.9 for silicon dioxide uh, it is close to 3.7 okay for silicon uh, the relative permittivity is uh, around 11.9 So the epsilon turns out to be uh, 11.9 multiplied by 18.885 into 10 to the power 14 farad per centimeter. So it turns out to be 1.05 into 10 to the power minus 12 farad per centimeter. Okay. So this uh, Gauss law uh, is written in a differential form here. This could also be uh, uh, represented in integral form. so you can see that the uh, integral form is uh, written below here so ey is basically ey not upon epsilon s y not to y rho y cap dy cap so uh, uh, y cap and uh, y cap is basically uh, you can say dummy variable so rho y cap dy cap and uh, the limit is from to y electric field ey in a still electric field at position y not 1 upon epsilon s integrated not to y and we will get the total electric field okay so gauss law this expression can be derived very easily from the gauss law uh, which could be useful later on in determining the electric field in the semiconductor devices so you can keep this in your mind and uh, the gauss law uh, uh, can further be modified as uh, you already know this uh, fact that the electric field uh, uh, the negative uh, the derivative of uh, the potential gradient nothing but it's a potential gradient so if psi is the potential so ey equal to minus dc d uh, psi by okay 
so uh, even from uh, this expression uh, we can write down the expression for the potential uh, both side as we did uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the case of gauss law so from here i can get psi y psi y is uh, psi y not minus y not to y e y not into d y not so again y cap here is a dummy variable okay right some other variable like et dt absolutely no problem okay so psi y uh, potential if the electric field is known tension is known so you can find out the potential if the charge is known you can find out electric field if the charge density is known you can find out the electric field using this expression if electric field is known you can find out the potential by using this integral equation okay uh, uh, this expression ey equal to minus dy by dy can be clubbed into uh, into the gauss law expression gauss law is uh, dey upon dy gauss law is this dey uh, 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 del e by del y with upon epsilon s. So when this expression is clubbed into uh, this expression, y uh, is substituted here. So this becomes left hand side becomes double derivative. Uh, it becomes d two psi by d y square, uh, and this uh, becomes equal to minus rho y upon s. So this is so called uh, the Poisson's equation. Okay. Poisson's equation, and this is uh, a very very important expression to find out uh, the electrostatic in any a semiconductor device. So uh, very frequently we'll be using this later on. So please uh, keep these equations in your mind. You can go through this. You are already familiar with this. Only I am reviewing uh, the concept once again. Okay. So the two important relations, Gauss law and Poisson's equations, will. Be used later on for our analysis. That's why I have reviewed those two equations here. So with this, uh, we'll finish uh, today's class. Okay, uh, uh, we'll meet tomorrow at as per schedule at 4 p.m. for our to continue our discussion. If you have any question, any doubt, then you can ask or you can drop your questions. Okay, uh, on the WhatsApp group. All right. Any question? Any doubt? Please let me know. So is it okay to everybody? Uh, let us stop uh, today. Uh,